there. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Corrine Rayson and I am the CEO of The Crew Coach. I used to work in the industry as crew over a decade ago. My background is in psychology and organizational psychology. And now I help Super Yacht Crew. So what do I do? I offer online counseling to help crew master their mental health. I offer a membership which provides crew not only an opportunity to network with exclusive professionals within our industry that will leave you feeling inspired, but I also offer training that will help your personal and professional growth. And I have an advanced leadership course that is guest IAMI accredited. Welcome to Yachting International Radio. You're with Kareen Rayson from The Crew Coach. And I tell you what, today is a little bit different because it's my first day of COVID. And I know that Grace has been through a lot herself. So we're coming up to the session very raw and as we are, because I think it's very important to be natural. And I'm very excited to have Grace Reynolds with us. She is the CEO of Mindful Neuro Link. You might have to help me, Grace. I think it's the COVID brain fog. Mindful Neuro Coaching. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Mindful Neuro Coaching which is a very fascinating topic. I think we could just really spend hours talking about it. I know Grace is an avid learner. She has so much to offer our community. And talking about that, Grace is actually going to be presenting a workshop for us all in our mastermind experience. So that is a lunch and learn session where you'll be able to access tickets and learn more about how do you motivate teams. So Grace is going to share a little bit about her experience and perhaps about the why. Why is it important to motivate teams? So before I begin, I want to welcome you, Grace. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, Corinne. <laughs> Wonderful. So Grace, before we dive in, perhaps tell us a little bit about your experience. Okay, I started doing leadership and particularly value uh, coaching um, on people's values uh, since 2015. I was actually uh, um, attracted to coaching because of my values. I heard someone on the radio who, um, on a webinar, sorry, uh, who had the same values as I did. And I couldn't believe it and I got very excited and they were a coach trainer. And I thought, oh man, I can't believe someone's got the same values as I did. And so I rang up and signed up and I've become a coach. So my coaching journey all started with matching my values with coaching values. Fantastic. Okay. So for people who don't know, what are values? Ah, values are an emotional state that we want to experience on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. And yes, interesting. If I can add to that, for me, my experience of values, it is the drivers of motivation. So it really influences your decision-making or your choices. Would you say that's correct? Uh, yes. And if it doesn't, you'll make the wrong choices. Correct. Yes. Yes. So I, how it was explained to me that, Corrine, that I really love just imagine a big in front of your big son and that son is your goal whatever goal it may be mm -hmm. and then there's two big mountains in front of the sun and there's a path to the sun values are the pebbles along the side of the path that keep you on the straight and narrow so you can achieve your goal okay so going back to teams, let's mm. say people have different values within a team. Mm. What are the benefits and disadvantages of that? Okay, so the benefits, um, I just want to clarify the question. Is the, is the question about people having different values to their next door neighbor 
colleague or is it about different values in general? I think different values to their team member. Yes, exactly. Okay. So one of the things that I have found when I'm helping employers have productive teams Mm. is that the employers have a set of values for their organisation. And if they don't, they should have. But you'll see a picture on a wall in a frame and it'll set out the values of the organisation. The problem with Mm. those values often is that they're not the values of the employees. Mm. And so we're asking people to be productive in an environment that doesn't match their own values. Yes. So we would call the values on the wall, wall, the organisational values, extrinsic values, because it's something outside of us that's driving us. Mm -hmm. Rather than, as you mentioned before, the motivational value that's the intrinsic value internally. Mm. So you are comparing apples and oranges. Yes. You're very lucky if they're the same. Yeah. So that's very interesting in terms of getting team members to comply to, for the sake of the lack of a better word, let's say organization so an organization can or we can also refer to in this context a oh, super yacht yes so how does one connect an individual or individuals to the overall values of the organization how do you get them working towards a common shared goal under the yeah. values umbrella so um because this is a how question. Yes, it is. It is. I'm going to now just give you a little bit of background to the neuroscience that I'll be okay. talking about the program. Is that okay? Yes, absolutely. Because it's important to understand the neuroscience behind the how. Mm-hmm. In our brains, network neuroscience tells us that there are five major networks in our brain. So... Um, our central executive network, which is our thinking network, as you said before, our decision-making processes. Mm -hmm. The largest one is our creativity and imagination network. And then under that, you have the motivational network and you have the emotional network. And then you have what's called the salience network. The salience network is where our values live. It's our non-language area of our brain. Now, you know, you you hear a lot of people say, I've never sat down and thought about my values, Mm. you know, and then they're working for an organization that has a set of values and they're they're realizing I can't keep up with my workload or I can't achieve the goals they want me to. It's actually because they're trying to achieve something someone else has placed upon them. Mm. So what I do is help people motivate their motivational network because if that motivation network is not fired up they will never achieve the goals Mm, mm. and how we do that is through our values which you'll be teaching in the workshop i will (laughs) and the the uh clincher that i wrote about in the in the bio was about i am teaching well this is about my experience that will help the super yachts i am teaching people how to have staff at their optimum productive um regimes so they get more revenue so they get more company delight in where they work by not matching the company's goals and values with the person but by ensuring that the company's goals and values match the staff Mm. intrinsic for the staff Mm. it's not external situation put on them and Mm. when you do that when you can match the staff's intrinsic values to that organization so that means the organization's values help them achieve living their own values 
if the motivation network fires up? Yes. Thing number one is identifying the common goal, the common cause. How you get there, it's, I think, as we all know, as individuals, we are unique. Yes. So with having a team comes with diversity and yes. innovation. Oh. So I don't think, you know, the journey is important, but as long as you know how to get from A to B and what directs you there through your values to achieve that common goal, shared vision, that's the most important thing. Exactly, exactly. And that's what fires up everyone's motivational network, no matter what their values are. Yeah. Because when it's intrinsically fired, it's alive and there's nothing you can do about it and let's go for it. <laughs> yes. And I think the other thing that comes with that is communication. And I think a lot of organization, organizations fail to talk about values and what's important to them as individuals under that organizational structure. So I might, for example, value confidentiality Mm -hmm. but someone else might value a completely different value. And so yep. there might be a clash and they could see that individual being closed and private and secretive. And mm -hmm. so their connotations or interpretation of how they see that individual may be misinterpreted, unfortunately. And I'm sure you experience this a lot. Exactly. And I'm working with one organization with that right now. Mm -hmm. um, and what unfortunately what happens is as you say the assumptions start happening and then we act on the assumption not on who the person really is and the spiral starts mm. so one of the things i teach with the values is how to communicate and resolve conflict within 10 minutes using oh. the same work process fantastic so mm -hmm. what for the participants of this workshop what will they walk away with in terms of their learning objectives okay um what i would like to do is actually share with them an exercise where they can work out what their own work related values are mm. um, that will take about 20 minutes so if they could you know if it's possible to have um, an a4 piece of paper with a pen uh, i'll help them do their own values and then um, i will help them understand how to um, work out whether or not um, they are aligned internally with their work related values for this particular super yacht. So they will be able to work out and assess how can they be internally motivated to achieve the most, what I call optimum productivity for what they want to achieve. Yes. And but I think, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. The process I'm teaching them, um, well, we're well known in the neuroscience world as providing optimum mental health. Mm. So what gets them their optimum productivity because they're following a pattern of the brain rather than um, encroaching something on the brain from external sources. Okay. And I think what's important to reiterate that you don't always have to comply with the organizational values. If they're completely different to yours in a negative way, then that job might not be the right fit for you. So for example, if there is a culture of discrimination and justice, and one of your values is justice, if that doesn't fit or is in alignment with your value, it's probably the right thing to do is to walk away. Exactly, exactly. You can't change them, so don't try. Yeah, uh, you'll just get you know keep getting into um, into situations that aren't healthy. Mm. Uh, I've just had a woman, and I don't mind actually sending you the review if you want, who mm. actually had been waiting for months and months and months to be paid, and on the day that she was finally going, and she was going in, and she knew she was angry. She knew she there was a possibility she would attack them. And what she did was she sat down with her values before she went in the room and she just kept going through her values, her own values. And when she got in there, she was as calm and they talked about it beautifully. She said what she wanted. She had her pay within 24 hours and she'd been waiting eight months. 
That's amazing. So yeah. I know you touched on, you mentioned mental health. Would you say that if you are not living in alignment with your values, it can contribute to mental health issues? Absolutely. And yes. stress. Yes. Yes. Or incongruent. Mm. Because you're, you know, a bit like the lopsided jigsaw puzzle even, you know, like the, all the pieces don't fit because you're out of alignment with who you are. Mm. Mm. Gosh, see how much there is there. There's so much rich content for us to unpack. And I know that this particular workshop will be life changing. Oh, I'm sure it will be. It usually is. I'd be surprised if it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, excellent, Grace. I'm so excited to have you within the mastermind and sharing all your wisdom with us and helping our learners move forward. Thank you very much. It'll be my pleasure to serve them all.